Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and I get the question on welding gases for TIG all the time. But I started getting a lot of questions on, can I use my MIG mix, my gases that I use in MIG welding, for TIG welding? Now, my friend Kevin Carone has been getting the same question time and time and time again. So I've decided to join him, and we'll answer those questions together. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to catch a plane with the Navy and uh, go see him in Scottsdale. So I'll get with you soon. several times now, you know, and it's normally a guy who's got a MIG, and he's just went out and bought himself a TIG. You know, and he's like, why do I have to go buy two bottles? You know, why can't I just have the, you know, the bottle of mixed gas that I'm running on my MIG and use it on my TIG? And I thought, what the heck, let's, let's talk about it, let's show it a little. And then we got an expert that walks in to help us on the technical side of what's going on. So, why? Why do you have to have two different gases? Okay, well, let's, let's first talk about the MIG process. I have a hard time saying that. I know, it's weird. It just yeah. doesn't flow very well. <laughs> well, you know, with the MIG process, you know, many years ago, the only thing we used was CO2. Okay. And CO2 worked fine for steel, uh, except when you would pull the trigger and the wire hit the other uh, part, you got a lot of spatter. Right. And so by mixing in or blending in uh, the, the argon, everything wets out nicer. It's just <laughs> a much prettier, nicer, deeper penetrating well. Okay. Okay, so it, if you take that thought, uh, you start talking about inert gases. And, and it's easy to think, well, I've got a bottle that's a 75-25 blend. 75 argon, 25 CO2. Right. Well, certainly that 75% will work great for TIG. You would think. It doesn't. The CO2 is an active gas, and when I say active, when you're MIG welding, that <clears throat> that trigger that you pull and the wire that comes out, right. it's live. Right. Okay, so it's active, very much like stick welding. Right. In TIG welding, it has to be 100% inert. It can't be active at all. There okay. can't be any volatility in there. Okay. So when, when somebody takes that bottle and they put it on their TIG machine, right. they find out right away, and here's the description that I get. A guy call me or a gal call me and say, I, I, I just set up my new welding machine. Beautiful. I love the machine. I got the torch in place, the tungsten set just right. I got the gas lens and back. Everything that you said. Right. When I light an arc on steel, it starts a puddle and then it flares up. Right. And immediately, I ask them, are they using their MIG mix? No. And they go, well, what's that? <laughs> That's that 7525. Look right. on your bottle. Right. Tell me what's on the bottle. And, and I can tell you, this happens every day. A lot. Okay, now in the TIG process, you can use argon for everything. Okay. It's, it's a completely inert gas. Uh, also, the gas transfers the arc. So you need a nice flooding of argon to get the arc initiation correct. If, <laughs> if, if you accidentally don't turn your gas on, what happens? Yep. Okay, we yeah. can see what happens. Big so so yeah. make sure that you even pre-purge. Sometimes I like to hit the foot control right. just to get the argon flowing, right. and then hit it again, and the arc will initiate beautifully on almost okay. every machine. Okay. So argon's good for steel, stainless steel, econel, titanium, all metals. Cool. And so I would say for 95% of all the welding that I do in TA, yeah. right. I use straight argon. Huh. I don't get into any mixes. Right. And, you know, yeah. eventually I got some specialty things that I do where I'm doing a little them. helium or something. Little, little helium, yeah. yeah. But you know the cost of helium's yeah. up there, you yeah. know. So, you know, you try to avoid that at, at all costs. Cool. But, okay. But that, that's the reason why. Okay. So I got a nice clean piece of uh, eight-inch plate here. You know, buzzed it off with a soft pad. You know, got all the scale off of it. You know, I got my longevity multi-pro 200 over here. Okay. The, the mid-tick stick machine. And I thought, well, let's just fire up the TIG 
will run a bead on argon and don't change anything else, just switch it from argon over to the argon CO2 and run a bead right next to it. Sure. You know, and that way we can show everybody the difference, you know, why you need one gas over the other. Okay, that's a great test. Cool. All right. Let's get some gear. Okay. Okay, so just to recap real quick, like I said, a piece of 8 inch plate, nice and clean, got my uh, longevity Pro MTS 200 fired up over there, and this is at uh, 104 amps, just with a TIG, and just a little filler wire, and argon, straight argon, and that's all I'm, all I'm going to run, and then I'll just switch it over and we'll put the CO2 argon mix on it, just so you can see the difference between the two of them. Got your helmet. Just get a little bubble going. And we'll throw a little filler on it if you can see it. Believe me, a little nervous knowing who's standing over there watching. <laughs> but let me turn the argon off and I'll put the CO2 argon on it, purge it, so we got just the CO2 argon mix up here, and then I'll run another bead right next to it. You'll see the difference. Okay, so same settings, same machine, same piece of steel, just with the mix gap. God, what a mess that is. Hello. So we'll get Mr. Tig here to come back in. Don't beat me with a stick, I, okay? I I'm just trying to show people. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, you, you know that first roll that you did? I was, I was watching your rhythm. I, it was fantastic. Thank you. I mean, you're right-handed. I try to convert you to left-handed. Uh, uh, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's on the other side of the bench. I'm left-handed. <laughs> but, but no, you had, you had a great rhythm. And, you know, the second beat that you ran, the first telltale sign that there's something wrong is it looked like Fourth of July. I know. Yeah, all kind of, I can even see it in the helmet. It, it, sparkles yeah, and everything. Yeah, it was pretty fascinating. Yeah, yeah. But you can see it sparkling yeah. and flaring yeah. up and everything yeah. else. And that's that's just what you get. That's you what get you get. CO2. That's, that's why you need the different gases yeah. for the different processes. Yes. So, no. Would I get the same kind of results if I was using the MIG and switch from the mixed gas to argon? Or forgot to turn the mixed gas well, on and had argon on? No, actually, you can weld aluminum very good with the, with the MIG process okay. using argon. In, in the MIG process, you're using short arc, but the argon itself allows the material to melt and wet out. Not nicely, but it does wet out nice, <laughs> decent. So I, I try not to mix those two processes. I, I know. I mean, we, we've heard that about you. Yeah. <laughs> Can we see what, what happened down there? Yeah, yeah, come here, come here, come here. So you can see right here, this is the one I did just with the argon. But good God, look at the mess right here. You know, all the smoke and the big crater right there. And man, what a mess that was. It looked like it rusted on you already. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that was excellent. That was cool. You know, a great demonstration. Well, I want to thank you for stopping by. Right. You know, it's nice to have the professional viewpoint on this, go with my viewpoint. So, I'm glad you had me over here. No, this is fun. Yeah, this is fun. Nice of you to come in. So if you get the chance, you know, pop out to TIG time, you know, Mr. TIG over on weld.com, or come see me, and don't forget that subscribe button right down there. But we're going to go find someplace cool, and we'll talk to you next time. Take care.